Hey, what's up, Duff here? Look what I got on the floor. I have Elsa, who's very cute and very scared because we are still dealing with the uh, the side effects of Hurricane Ian. I don't know, you probably can't see much out that window, but yeah, it's, it's a mess here. But um, I still have power, and I'm bored from listening to a newscast telling me how terrible it is uh, outside. So I am going to finally get around to just changing the tire on the CX-20S. Supposedly it's not that hard. Um, I have it on the floor because I'm going to probably be utilizing my body weight to get the tire off and on. So that's easiest to do on the floor, even though it's not the easiest on my knees, but uh, that's, that's the plan. So the first thing that I need to do is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I saw uh, George from Go George Go, he did a video on this where he did this in like his front yard or something or in the street um, but I'm actually working off some written instructions that someone had placed in Facebook and the first thing is you gotta depressurize the shock makes sense right depressurize and compress it there we go. and if this works as I expect it will it's very surprising how little you have to do to change the, the tire or the tube on the EX20S. You don't even have to take the pedals off. All right, so I'm gonna start on the left-hand side, and the first thing I need to do is take out the four motor bolts on this side. And we're just gonna let this roll. Oh, wow. Okay, one of them was loose. Two of them were loose. Okay, the first one was tight. The second one was tight. Okay, th these two were tight. Uh, those two were not so tight. Should know better. You know, when you get a new wheel, you're supposed to check all your bolts, especially with a pagode, but I did not. And there is a spacer that's under here. So you want to kind of pay attention to how that is oriented. I have these long T-handle Allen keys, which I kind of like. They're very good for getting into positions like this, don't you think, Elsa? Elsa, you look so miserable. She wouldn't eat any food today. She hasn't had any, any food at all. I don't think I've seen you drink either. She just, she just hides. She's terrified. She's terrified of bad weather. Even just normal thunderstorms or rain that I get around here, she's terrified. And you, may, and, and you may ask me, Duff, why are, you, why are you changing the tire? I mean, I haven't found the Navi to be uh, horrible or anything, but I've just I've heard from multiple people that uh, putting a street tire on this just makes it feel so much better. You know, you don't have that sudden that sudden drop off uh, on the edge that you can sometimes with the, with the Navi. So, and since I do, you know, 99% street riding, and I don't think I would ever take this thing uh, off street, off hard surface. It just makes sense for me to do it. The tire I'm putting on it, which you see next to it, I think. Can you see it? No, you can't. I'm putting on the tire from my old street tire from my Sherman. My Sherman originally came with a street tire, and uh, I took it off and put the knobby on. In that case, I do like the knobby more on the Sherman. But I am going to be putting the Sherman street tire on my EX20S. So in a weird way, it'll be a way for me to have my Sherman live on once I sell it, which I am trying to do. Just trying to pull these all the way out, but I'm not having much luck. Just have some blue Loctite on them. Okay, there's little, hmm, there's little lock washers down there as well, which did not come out. Don't want to lose those. It did. Okay, so I, I took off the, the uh, bolts for the motor on that side, on the left side. Now we're going to go over to the right. Let me get my written instructions here. I need to remove the front bolt on the upper pad. Okay, don't lose the uh, the spacer. 
I got it. All right. Okay, so then all that's left is to remove the screws for the battery case. There's six of them. They all have lock washers, don't lose them. Just had another uh, half a dozen uh, power hits. Yeah. It would, it would be awesome if I could retain power because uh, during Irma I could not and um, had no power for like 12 days and that was that was miserable. Okay, so I have the six screws out of the battery pack uh, holder, the case. I'm removing these little retaining wires or retaining clips for the the motor wire. They're just two little Phillips heads. I think I can just kind of take the battery pack and... Oh wait, I guess I should... Yeah, these wire clips up here as well. I should probably take that out, or one of them at least. Take that, lay that over there. Baby, it's okay. It's okay. Lay down. On this side, on the motor side, there's only three bolts to hold it on instead of four, which is sort of interesting. I can very clearly see the spacer here now. It's like, a, it's like a C spacer, it's like a C with the opening on this side. So I assume it's the same configuration on the other side. There you want to go, you want to go behind the trash can? Go ahead. Look at that, voila, here it comes. Alright, so this goes. I'm going to just lay that in the orientation that it was. Got to deflate the tire as well. Right, looks like I need to. Okay, I, I do need. There's a. There's another clip up here that I neglected to remove. Two more small small Phillips heads. There goes the power again. I have a lot of UPSs around the house, so that's the clicking that you hear. Elsa knows that that clicking means that there's something not good going on, so she gets very nervous when she hears it. All right, baby. Okay. Now this should have a lot more room. Look at that. Look at all that room. All right. Okay, so I'm going to work on getting this tire off. I'll let you know if there's any, any gotchas on it, but I've done a decent amount of tire changes, so I just expect it to sort of suck. So obviously you need to work the tire off the side without the cable. I, I know when George did his, he used uh, metal metal um, tire irons or tire pliers, whatever you want to call them. I prefer to use plastic where I can because um, Sometimes, or a lot of times, metal tools will have more of a tendency to, to uh, damage the tube, which I would like to avoid. All right, so I got started, so I should be able to go around to do this. Yeah, see, that's the way it's supposed to work. Get it started. There we go. One side off. Okay, for this, I want to start away from the 
away from the valve, actually ideally, yeah, ideally just pull the freaking tube out now, if you can, that will make it better, and still have some air pressure in there, I see, alright, tube's out, let a little bit more air out of it, alright, so the tire should just come right off. Again, using a similar strategy, just get it started with the tire iron and then just kind of peel around the edge. And there you go, tire off. Of course, I'll keep that tire too, just in case. All right, so this did have a direction on it. Um, okay, rotation is this way. So put it on that way. That's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. And then rotation. Okay, that's right. All right, so let me get the tube in here first. Again, you can, only, you can only install this from one side because the wire is in. Communication has been very spotty for a lot of people, understandably, right? Very spotty. My hole. Getting the first side in should be not a problem. The second side that you gotta struggle with. Uh, where's my rotation? I'm paranoid like having the rotation uh, or having the tire mounted backwards because even though you know you could you could run it that way, you know, probably without a major hassle, it still would annoy the F out of me. So okay again, let's utilize the tire iron over the lip. This is what I usually like to use my body weight for, actually. It's all possible. Just leverage. I'm gonna take just some leverage. All right. I'm sure that you're. Where your tube is tucked up there in the tire for sure. So now I need to uh, uh, inflate the tube a little bit. Okay, just put uh, 10 psi in there. Just give it a little bit of a squeeze. Feels okay. It's holding. It's holding pressure, which is what you want. So at this point, I think I'm ready to put it back in. I got, got the uh, veteran veteran street tire on there. So this is, this is the one spot where it can get a little tricky, from what I understand. And the tricky part is like getting getting the spacer the spacers uh, in place uh, under the wheel. So, let's see what we can do there. Elsa, what are you doing, honey? Okay, so this is gonna probably be a lot of futzing around. Um, I don't know if, if uh, futz is a Pennsylvania word, but I'm gonna be futzing around to just get this lined up, and then I'll, I'll describe uh, this, the experience afterwards. Okay, I was, I was futzing around too much, getting frustrated, so I just popped this battery pack off the backside to, to get this the spacer in there, it was just, it was being a pain in the ass. So, you know, it was six screws, uh, easy enough. So I just took that off. Now I have that side in. I gotta flip it over. I gotta put all this stuff back in, flip it over and put the other spacer in. Okay, I got the uh, battery box on here. Putting the, uh, the motor cable back in place. 
the with the little brackets make sure you don't forget this step because it's important just reattaching the battery uh, on the front here reattach the seat post and then flip it over and then get the spacer in on the other side hopefully that one is not as difficult as the first one we'll see i think it might be better because i already have the one side lined up so i'm thinking the second side will go on easier but that's only a theory it has not been proven okay so on this side i decided just to take the battery off again off, off one side so i get this in because trying to do it um come on really trying to do it the uh, battery pack on would have been impossible so and right now I'm seeing that I could have a clearance problem. Uh, I could have a clearance problem because I shouldn't have tightened the other side first. Okay. Okay, just to keep you in the loop of what I, I did, um, I had to, I went back over to the right side, right side being as if you're standing on the wheel, the right side, the motor cable side. And I had to release the motor cable again. I had to remove these hold down so I can get to the, the, the one uh, bolt here for the motor. I loosened those three, I flipped it back over, and then I was able to wedge the spacer in. I had to actually like use a little screwdriver just to get it started, and then I was able to uh, wedge it in there. And then through a lot of futzing, I got it lined up, got it secured. Now I just have to tighten, oops, I almost forgot to do that before I put the motor cable in. I just gotta tighten these three bolts in Put the hold downs back on the motor wire, the the, um, the side pad back in, and I think we're almost there. So yeah, so I have some thoughts about this, which I will be sharing shortly. Shortly. Yeah, I know this is terrible lighting, but sorry, I'm gonna deal with it. I got, got hat hair. So, anyways, it's back together, totally back together. Got my Sherman Road tire on here. Unfortunately, since we are still dealing with uh, a hurricane. I'm not going to go out and test it right now, but I'm hoping to get some good results. Everyone that has put a street tire on the EX20S has had favorable things to say about it. Now, what I don't have quite as favorable of a thing to say about is, is what I read as far as uh, changing the tire. Yes, you can take it all the way apart without um, doing much other than removing one battery pack, but getting it back together um, was a challenge. Since it takes probably less than two minutes to remove one of these battery packs, uh, I would recommend just just removing the battery packs to get access to put those spacers back in when you're putting the wheel back together. Because otherwise, you know, I tried to do it without it for 15 minutes and wasted a lot of time. It was just frustrating, difficult to line up, and uh, just taking the, uh, a battery pack off each side allowed me much better access to get those spacers in. So that's what I would recommend doing. Take a battery pack out of both sides uh, when you put those spacers back in, and don't don't tighten, fully tighten either side until you have them both started and in there so i've been wanting to do this for a little while finally got around to it uh took a hurricane a hurricane for me to make the time but uh yeah that's it uh we got word that the office is closed tomorrow as well so who knows what tomorrow will bring i still have power i still have power i still don't have internet but uh we'll get by all things considered i'm in much much better shape than a lot of people in my area there's a lot of people that um uh, quite literally have been devastated uh, by this storm. So I, I am lucky in that regard for sure. So if you found this video interesting, please give a big thumbs up. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're going to subscribe, you can always hit the notify bell, which is over there somewhere. Feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. What do you think about me putting a street tire on my EX20S? Uh, considering that I ride almost exclusively on the street, yeah, it makes sense, right? I'll hold on to the old tire. Who knows? I might have a use for it someday. But part of my Sherman will live on in my EX20S. And uh, for some reason, part of me kind of likes that. So that's all I have for now. Hope you guys are doing better than our area is. Um, if you want to move to Florida, uh, remember this is part of what, you, uh, what, you, uh, what you're what what you you signing up for. Hurricanes. And they are not fun. So that's it, guys. Duff me now. Hurricane. Hurricanes, hurricanes.